Hi there. And in other tutorials, I've used uh, beauty passes for compositing CGI, and also more complex arrangements where the overall image is broken into its constituent forms, such as the diffuse, specular, reflections, lighting, shadows, ambience, etc., and then outputted as separate passes, which are then reassembled in the composite. In this tutorial, I want to look at another set of CGI render passes called Arbitrary Output Variables, or AOVs for short. These are essentially passes that provide information about the image, but are not meant to be seen. They essentially allow us to gain control over different aspects of the scene, primarily for compositing purposes. If we just take a look at this scene here, and I'll just play it out. If you've seen some of my other tutorials, you might have seen this uh, short clip before. It's essentially a one-second animation uh, that was rendered out of Maya um, as a multi-channel, multi-layer EXR sequence. And it's essentially the layers and channels that are significant to us because this is where we'll find the AOVs. So if we look at the layers, we can see here we've got some uh, we've got some familiar layers such as diffuse, uh, reflection, shadows, etc. Typical passes that uh, that make up the beauty. Uh, but we've also got a few uh, others in here, such as the motion vector, normals, points, z depth, UVs, and these are the ones. These are called these are AOVs, and these are essentially what I want to be using today. I'm going to start by looking at the motion vector. We we'll just need to scrub it on a little bit just to see a little bit more of this. Okay, so this pass contains the UV values, um, a single channel data, a little bit like a mat. The U values are in the red channel and the V values are in the green channel. So if we just take a look at the, um, at the channels here, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky within the, uh, within the capture software, so I'll just do it with keyboard shortcuts. So this is the red channel, we can see that it contains some data, and this is the green channel which almost looks like it opposes it and essentially these are used to control the direction of the motion blur. If we look in the blue channel and the alpha channel there's no data so the, the data is contained just within the red and the green channel but it is not red and green channel data it's actually the U and the V values. So these are generally outputted as a pass from the CG application, from the shader more precisely of the CG application. But we can also create these inside new using uh, nodes like the Vector Generator, Motion Blur 2D, Motion Blur 3D, or even the Scanline Renderer. Okay, so let's look at how we can actually expose this and take a look at it. I'm going to just add in a Vector Blur a node underneath the teapot. And we're going to use this to create a feeling of, of motion blur. I'm going to be applying the motion blur over the RGB, so I'm going to need to set the channels up to be the RGB. But for the UV channels, this is where I'm going to actually select my motion vector pass. And once we've done this, we can just raise up the we can raise up the multiply somewhere around about here to actually create the uh, the, the motion blur itself. So if we just flip back to the RGBA, we can already see that this, there's the sense of some motion blur actually occurring now within this uh, within this image. We can see that taking place once it's once it's cached. We can see that motion blur in place. Okay, and you can see here that we've got um, we've got additional access to the U and the V channel separately. So we can actually influence these as well to control the direction of the motion blur. Okay, so that's a typical use of motion vectors. I'll just get rid of that and we'll take a look at the at the depth channel now. So for this I'm going to add a blur node. Um, okay, that's not appearing. Uh, sometimes some of the uh, some of the plugins aren't I immediately available. We have to go down to the plugins. This is actually occurring off screen, but what I'm doing is I'm coming down to the bottom to uh, a, 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 the the very bottom of this which is which says all plugins and then update. Once I've done that, once I've come back into this again, I wish I could do this separate limit. See if I can actually break this, um, break this off, and see if I can sort of configure it in a slightly different way for the sake of the tutorial. All right, might be able to do it now. This is better. So I went into here and hit the update button. Once I hit the update button, then I get the alphabet. And uh, right down at the bottom of this, again, I'm struggling within the screen capture. Is uh, in the in the Z's is Z blur. And once I've selected that, then um, 
then it it now becomes available, and I'll, I'll have to do that a couple of times over the course of the uh, over over the course of this tutorial because I think there'll be a couple of no uh, nodes that give us a similar kind of effect. Okay, you can see that once this node's in, if I just kill it and uh, bring it back, you can see that that's affecting the whole image straight away. That's not what we want to do here. What I actually want to do here is I want I want to use the depth channel to create a, d a depth of field effect. Okay. So again, if we come back, if we come and have a look at our passes, this is the this is the pass that we're interested in, the z depth, and the z depth essentially represents um, represent again it's a single channel, so we'll, all the data, uh, all the data is in the red channel. There's nothing in the green, blue, or alpha, um, so it's a single channel image, uh, and and it represents the um, the brightness of the pixel is rep represented by the distance of each object relative to the camera. So because of that, we can actually target areas of this image uh, to, to and take them out or into focus. So I'll just re-enable my my blur node, and I need to set the depth channel. So at the moment it's set to Z depth Z, which it does by default. There's actually one that called Z depth Z, which is the one that was rendered out of this. That's the one that I actually want to use. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of depth of field just so that we've got something to work with. 0 0.5 should be fine. Okay, and we'll flip back into RGBA. Okay, so in the focal plane setup, if we start moving the focal plane around now, what we're essentially doing is we're defining the areas of the image that are in focus, in front of focus, or behind focus. And if you're not sure which one is which, if you just hover over this, you get a little tooltip which says what's what. So we can see that the red is less than depth of field, so it's actually behind the focus. Blue is greater than depth of field, so it's closer to the camera. And green is inside depth of field, so it's sharp focus. So around about here, let's just try 0.6. So around about this, maybe a little bit more. Um, what we've got here is we've got the teapot and we've got this area that's immediately adjacent to the teapot in sharp focus. We've got this area which is in front of camera so will therefore be blurred and we've got this area which is behind the camera and therefore will also be blurred. So if I turn the setup view off now and we can see that this is in focus and this is slightly out of focus now in the background. And as I raise up the size, we'll see that in much greater It's come up here some somewhere quite significant so we can actually see it clearly. All right, let's take it right up. So in this particular match you just have to just raise up the depth of field a little bit more. No, I need to bring that down. Maybe I've got a little bit too much depth of field on there. So what we can see is we can see the teapot is now, and this area adjacent to the teapot is banging focus, but then areas that are close to the camera are out of focus, and areas that are falling away into the distance are also out of focus. And of course we can we can change this now. So to demonstrate that, if we just turn the, this back on, and we'll just uh, we'll just crank up the uh, just crank up the focal plane plane. So what we're doing here now is that we're making the very far end of the, the, the depth of the box we're making in focus and everything else is out of focus so again if we come back to this and view it we can now see that this area is now in sharp focus but everything in front of that is now out of focus so effectively we're changing the depth of field primarily by using the brightness values that exist within the Z depth channel so we're using the data that was determined by the camera in relation to the camera of distance away from the camera we're using that now to actually blur the image I'll, I'm going to take that back to 0.6 or wherever it was before just to actually reinstate the uh, the teapot in sharp focus and of course all these parameters can be animated so we can shift the depth of field over time okay so that's one use of the of, of the Z blur I'll just um, I won't take that off. I'll just shift it to to the side because I want to show another use of the um, uh, of the uh, depth channel, which uh, which is to actually create procedural mats. So we can create mats based on the Z position of objects relative to the camera. So again, with the Z slice node, which is which is this one. Here, again, I need to tell it to use the RGB, uh, and I need 
I need to tell it to reference the Z depth channel. Okay, and now we've got this control which determines the center of the slice. So you can see this is a bit like the Z blur. Okay, and we know that round about six zero point six two the teapot was in focus and the extra areas were, was, were, were out of focus. So if we just flip this over and look at the uh, look at the alpha channel, I will need to set this to RGBA. If we if we look at this from the alpha channel and we just start to move this around, we can see how we can actually fill in and make mats just purely and simply from the depth of the of the image. Okay. So I'll just quickly whip that back into RGBA. In fact, before I do that, we'll just have a look at the field width because this has still got a little bit of gap gap in there. We can still see that there's, there'll be transparency around that rim and also that the, the the handle isn't fully brought out. So we can see now that I can start to manipulate the field width and just complete the teapot. Okay, so I've now got a teapot mat which should stand up over time. Maybe we've got a little bit more there that we just need just to take out slightly. Let's just take a look at that, make sure that we haven't got any encroachment over time. Okay, so in that particular setting, back to the RGB, you can see now how we've managed to achieve a procedural mat for the teapot without having to resort to any complex rotoscoping. We could simply take out the rest of, of this peripheral area just with a very simple garbage mat now. So there's a couple of very practical uses for the uh, for the Z-depth. Okay, so that's just some I think pretty useful, but nevertheless fairly straightforward uses of uh, arbitrary output variables. I think we'll wrap up at this point. In the second part of the tutorial, we'll take a look at some more complex uses of AOVs.